Hi, Jamie Davis here from NTI 2013, the American Association of Critical Care Nurses Conference in Boston. And I'm really excited to be interviewing Beth Ulrich. She has been involved in the research on the nurse work environment. And this is something that's near and dear to all of us as we try to figure out exactly uh, what our work environments to be like and, and why, how we can make it healthier, how we can better support each other and support ourselves throughout our careers. Beth, um, before we get into all of that though, uh, I always like to ask uh, something about your background as a nurse. Why did you become a nurse and, and what was your pathway to bring you to where you are today? Well, my, my pathway started with when I grew up, little girls became nurses, teachers, or secretaries. So if you went to college, you were a nurse or a teacher, and, and I picked nursing. And um, I sort of accidentally became a nephrology nurse, so my clinical home was nephrology for years. Um, I've been president of the American Nephrology Nursing Association, mm -hmm. and currently I edit their journal. Mm -hmm. But I've also been a chief nursing officer and a chief operating officer. I've worked for a nursing magazine. Um, I've had so many opportunities as a nurse. It's been wonderful. That's one of the neat things about being a nurse is that you have the opportunity to try out so many things and the nursing career takes you in so many different directions. It does. I, I was also fortunate. I had a mentor who taught me that what you wanted to do was you wanted to put yourself in the best place that you could so that when opportunities came to you, which you would never ever envision would come, that you would be ready. And it's kind of analogous to Florence Nightingale talking about putting the patient in the best place for healing to occur. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we as nurses have to do is we have to get our degrees, we have to get our experience, um, and then we have to look at the opportunities. And I had opportunities I never dreamed of when I was um, coming out of school. Yeah, it's certainly changing dynamically all the time. Uh, you're looking at nurse workforce survey. This is the third year for that survey to, to be out there. Uh, AACN's backing that and, and looking at what's going on. What, what has this uh, research found in the past as we lead into this third year of, of research? Well, and it's, it's actually the third survey, but A, since CN has been a leader for a very long time in looking at healthy work environments, and the first survey we did was in 2006, and then we followed right after the healthy work environment standards came out. We then did a survey in 2008, and now this one in 2013. And what it's all about is really asking nurses themselves, nurses who are at the front line, exactly what their work environments look like, mm -hmm. the good, the bad, and the ugly, to see where we need to make improvements and where we can help environments be better because when nurses work in healthy work environments, patients do better as well as nurses. Yeah, and that's really, I mean, it comes back to the patient care uh, and, and what happens with those outcomes. What are some of the things that we've discovered that make a healthy work environment? Well, we've discovered that things like communication and collaboration, that goes all the way back, the research on that, to the mid-70s when um, critical care nurse did some sort of work with a physician and found that when nurses and doctors work together in intensive care units, that the patients do better, less morbidity, but the nurses are more satisfied. And that research has continued over the years. And so the communication, the collaboration, we're doing a lot of work now in hospitals with teamwork, interprofessional teamwork. Nurses are well positioned to, to lead those efforts. Um, effective decision making, involving nurses in decisions. The IOM report, The Future of Nursing, has mm -hmm. been talking about that in several of them. Authentic leadership. Leadership is really, really coming to the forefront. Um, we've talked a lot about communication, collaboration, the things leaders do, recognition, meaningful recognition, not just recognition, but leadership is a real key right now as we go into all of these changes in healthcare and all of the changes in nursing. Now, what do you mean by leadership? Are you talking about the nurse leaders in an individual facility, or are you talking about nurses stepping up and becoming leaders? Well, you know, the interesting thing is if you look at our standards of practice for nursing, being a leader is the job of every nurse. So it's not just what you have on your badge, it's what you have in your heart. Mm -hmm. And there are so many ways nurses can lead because of their knowledge, because of their expertise, because of the way they learn to handle events. You know, we don't frazzle easy. No. Um, and that kind of leadership is good in every situation. So from CNOs, CEOs, COOs, there are nurses in all of those title leadership positions, but there are nurses on every shift in every hospital who are leaders too. Well said, I really appreciate that. And uh, you've got the new research that's come in the 2013 uh, survey. Uh, do you have any data from that? It's, it's brand new? 
We do. We have some preliminary data. We had a response of 8,440 critical care nurses respond this time to the survey, which is the highest we've ever had. So we've, we've got a lot of information to delve through. But what we're seeing is there are some things we've made progress on. Um, Certification is a good example. Hospitals, according to the results of our survey, are much more valuing certification for nurses. They're understanding that certification means more knowledge, more experience, less errors, more confidence. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing some regression, which is probably not unexpected with the last five years of the recession and think, tightening our belts and wondering what's going to happen in the, the next years. So we have regressed a little bit in some of the use of nurses in, in making decisions, um, some of those kinds of areas, some of the recognition. You know, when you get busy at everything else, sometimes you forget to do what sounds like a little thing of recognition, but is a really big thing. And then we've got some areas where we've sort of held in place, the areas of verbal abuse and disruptive behavior. Despite all of our efforts, don't seem to have made a lot of progress on, on getting better and we need to work on that more. So, so there's a number of places we found things. We've also found some really big differences between nurses who say they're satisfied in their current position and nurses who say they're not satisfied in their current position. We live in totally different worlds. Um, is apparent by the data. So we'll be doing some more digging on that. So we're also going to look at, at magnet versus non-magnet, you know, nurses who work in magnet hospitals versus others. We're going to be looking at certified nurses versus nurses who aren't certified. Um, a lot of different things like that. So we've got a lot of data and to look through, but it's, it's a lot of good work. And it, it's a lot of it supports what some of us know intuitively, but you always need the data to support the intuition. And, and I like how you really have made this into practically applicable data. Uh, we talked about that before we started this interview, that it's important to have data that you can take back and, and use in your practice. I, I actually just finished a presentation at NTI on reporting these preliminary results, and, and it does my heart good when I, when I look in the audience and someone's writing a note because I think that's something that person can take back and they can use next week when they get back mm -hmm. to their unit, and I think that's the best kind of research. Well, Beth, thank you very much for coming on The Nursing Show and sharing some of your insights with uh, my audience here on The Nursing Show, and um, I hope maybe someday we can have you on again. Good. Well, when we get more of the data looked at, we'll come back and talk to you about more specifics. Fantastic. And I want to thank all of you for checking out the show. Remember to follow up on all of the information from the nursing show and everything we've covered here at NTI in the show notes and over at nursingshow.com. We'll find all of that there. And in the meantime, remember to stay safe and stay tuned here to the nursing show. All our video segments here from NTI 2013 are brought to you through the generous support of Physio Control and their true CPR tool. It's a coaching and management tool for CPR. It gives you real-time feedback, it's simple to use, and it lets you perform high-quality compressions, giving you accurate depth measurement and accurate reporting on the compression fraction and the time on the chest. All of that brought to you by Physio Control. You can find out more information by heading over to physio-control.com and check out the new True CPR.